the other morning when I woke up, I woke up and I, I kept hearing that highway to the danger zone. And I saw this caution tape, like literally just all over the stage. And, and I knew that, that when, when I saw that, that the Lord was trying to speak something. And, and so I just said, God, what is it? What is it that you're trying to say? And, and, and I knew that it, it was not only a warning. It was not only a warning, but listen to me. It's a call to obedience. Are you ready? It's not only a warning, but it's a call to obedience. It's a call to an obedience and an awareness and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit like never before. And I am telling you, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. I, I'm, I'm in this world, but I am of another place. And I want you to know that we can be here and live victorious. I, I don't, I, I, I'm here to send you a message today that if you have been living in defeat and you are down and you are depressed and you are struggling, I have an answer for you. Amen. And if you will allow God to come into your heart and invade you on another level, can I tell you something? There will be a joy released to you like none other. There is a joy being released into the church because you need strength and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of you just need to laugh. I, I listened to the other the other day, and y'all heard that 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 signal that Dr. Avery, and he was saying, "Your body don't know if it's really laughing or if it's not laughing. You just need a ha ha ha." Some of you just need to start making your ha ha ha, and then and then and then your body will think, "Ooh, she's happy. We're gonna we're gonna like this." And so, if you need to pretend to laugh until you laugh, then pretend on. Okay, look at the person next to you and say, "Ha ha, <laughs> yes, ha 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 ha." <laughs> Y'all know that a little old song when I was when I was in kids church little you say ha 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 y'all don't know that ha 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength yes. That's what he is. And he says he sets my, my feet to dancing, and there's all kinds of little fun. So y'all just might need to go back and pull you some little kids' music and just pretend like you're a child again. Amen? All right. So um, there were warning signs everywhere, and, and so I began to see that. And so we have these caution wet floor signs. We have signs that, that mean things. And warning signs everywhere, a slippery floor, a construction zone. A school zone. In our homes, there are warning labels telling us not to drink certain chemicals, yes, and to keep certain items out of the reach of children. We're used to this. This is not something that is uncommon, okay? Warning signs are a normal part of our daily routine. Warning signs are. And they are there and require us to pay attention in order to prevent harm or even death. And so, um, you know, even God's word, his word is our warning. His word is a warning to us. And so I just want to share this morning a little bit about the Holy Spirit and that how he helps us in our daily life and how he can help you in situations. He can help you with difficult people that you are working with. He can help you. Um, the Holy Spirit is there so that you can know when to do something and when not to do something. How many of you know we say it all the time? You can do the right thing at the wrong time, and it's like doing the wrong thing. And so we, we need to know what is the timing? When do we do this? When do we not do this? God, what are you saying? Are you saying for me to go to this college? Are you saying for me to stay at home? Are you saying for me to take this job? Or what, like, God, how do, how do I know, God? What is the plan for for, for my life. God, how do I know these things? And so, so one of the greatest things that God has given to us is the Holy Spirit. And you know what? When, when Jesus was here, he says, you know, I'm going. He says, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. He says, when I go, he said, the Holy Spirit's going to come. And he said, he's going to comfort you. He's going to guide you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to be your lawyer. He's going to show you which way to go. He's going to tell you how it's all going to work out. But you must tap into the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And you must listen to him and you must obey him. And I think that that is so cool that, that, that Jesus, that, that God sent his son Jesus. Then Jesus tells us of the Holy Spirit. And he says that, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father ever interceding for us. The Holy Spirit is in us praying through 
us. And I told first service this morning, you have two-thirds of the Godhead praying for you, for you to make it. How awesome is that, that God is praying for you and there's power available there. And so, so, so Jesus goes and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the comforter and he's going to be with you and he's going he's gonna to be all this that you need. You know, I was just thinking that how sad is it that God gave us exactly what we need and so many times we don't take advantage of it. Yeah? We don't take advantage of of the direction that he wants. We don't take advantage of the warning signs that he gives. And 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 you get close, you you start taking you you heard people that had testimonies today that it didn't just happen like I'm going to fall off a cliff really quick. You know, it's like a little gradual here, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It's a little here and a little there. And then before you realize it, you think, "How did I get to this place?" because this is not where I started. But even in the middle of all of that, God wants to minister to us. And so So in that, uh, he says, I've given you the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be with you. And he's going to show you how to be a mom, and he's going to show you how to be a dad. And he's going to show you how to curve that anger. And he's going to show you how to take that depression that's trying to come on your life. And he's going to show you how to throw it away. And, And so here we have all in the person of the Holy Spirit Every single thing we would need. And so he says, as if that's not good enough, he says, I'm going to give you a language. And you, can, and, and you can get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you can pray in other tongues. And in this church, we're not ashamed of tongues. We're not ashamed of it. Because it's not just our doctrine. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. And I'll show you some scriptures. And so we pray in the Holy Spirit. And, and, and the Bible says in Jude 120, but you, beloved, build yourself up on your most Holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you something. The Lord spoke to me, and he said, Amy, the times that you felt the weakest, the times that you felt like you didn't have the strength, the times that you felt like you didn't have what it takes, the times that you felt like somebody was literally sucking the life out of you, and you're exhausted. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He said, you must pray in the Holy Spirit. He said, because there is a, 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 a power that is released when you begin to pray. Power is released into whatever situation. And, and so I think so many times maybe the church thinks, well, if I can't just pray five hours, then I'm just not going to pray at all. No, no, no. You just pray. You, you, you begin to release your tongues. You begin. You, if you're driving in the car, you pray in the spirit. You're on your lunch break. You can go to the bathroom and, and have your little break and just uh, uh, pray in the spirit. You can, when you're in the shower, you go for a walk, whatever it is and the bible says out of your belly will flow a river of living water and you begin to pray in the holy spirit and next thing you know your it sends a signal to your body and your whole body is refreshed i tell everybody all the time you don't need to go on a vacation to be refreshed you don't have to go on a vacation to be refreshed but what you do need to do is get in the presence of god the presence of god will refresh you that is what will refresh you. You can go have fun on a vacation and come tired, come home tired after vacation. But when you get in the presence of God, you are refreshed. That is refreshing, is in the presence of God. Amen. And so, and so uh, Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. In the Passion Translation, it says this, But every person, for, but before every person, There is a path that seems like the right one to take, but it leads straight to hell. Matthew 7, we're not going to go there. It talks about the narrow gate, and it says this. Come to God through the narrow gate, because the wide gate and the broad path is the way that leads to destruction. Nearly everyone chooses the crowded road. How is it that everybody tries goes for the crowded road. It's no different than you're at a sale. You go into you go into a store and everybody is it's Black Friday's coming up and everybody's gonna be clumped over a table and you're gonna be like, oh that's the bargain is over there. That's where the bargain is at. Go to the go to the people and they just let open the doors and everybody just runs. They just run and end up and you think wherever the crowd is, that's where the bargain is. And I want to tell you that that uh, the narrow gate in the difficult way leads to eternal life. And, and many, few don't find it. And, and let me tell you why. It's not because God doesn't want you to find it. It's not because he doesn't want you there. But this just really hit home with me. The gate, the gate to heaven is narrow 
in the sense that there is a particular requirement for entrance. There's a particular requirement for entrance, and that is faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is the only way, and that's what makes it the narrow way. Because he's the only way. The wide gate is the non-exclusive. It allows for all human effort and all the world's religion. It's all there. Anybody, come on. Come on, we'll take the crowd. So that's what makes that the wide gate. The narrow gate is there is only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. There, he is the only way. And so uh, it's, it's interesting to know that if you've ever had your foot caught in a net and tangled up, you know what it's like to need a power greater than yourself. If, if, if you've ever felt that you were in quicksand and you were dying slowly and nobody even knew, you know what it's like to need a power greater than yourself. If you've ever come out of being in a dark place, you know what it's like to need a power greater than yourself. If you've ever been drowning and, and, and the pull of the world is so unbearably strong, you know what it's like to need a power greater than yourself. And so today we're saying that the Holy Spirit is available to you. Why is it that so many of the church shun it? So many of the church say, well, that's not for today. I am telling you today, I am standing here, the Holy Spirit, he is my very best friend. I love him. I don't want to grieve him. I cannot imagine what my life would be like without the Holy Spirit. When I go to do something wrong, he touches it. He, he nudges me. He tells me. And I, I want to train myself to where when I even say something wrong, I am quick to repent. Amen? And that is why we need the Holy Spirit in our life. And we're at a time that we must be intentional about the power of the Holy Spirit. We must be intentional about his power in our life. There are some of you, even in this room, you've got people that are up close and personal to you. And God has told you over and over and over and over again, this person doesn't need to be up close and personal to you. They're detrimental. They're dangerous. They're toxic. And, and, and you still continuously ignore that. And then that person is continuously continuously up close and personal and then you want to know why you never get the breakthrough it's because when when you move God moves when you move God moves I said that Wednesday night and everybody's waiting on God to move and then they move it's not the way it goes God's waiting on you God is waiting on you to step out and say you know what I feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to be obedient to it. I'm going to be obedient to the following of the Holy Spirit. And church, it is time. We are living in an hour. We are living in an hour that you can't play games. You've got to come in. You've got to mean it. You've got to say, God, I surrender all. Sing the old chorus, I surrender all. If you've got to put snot on the altar and you just say, God, I'm giving you me. I surrender all. I have got to have you in my life. God, you're the one who brings the glue. You're, you're, you put it all together. God, I got to have you. And we're living in a time right now where, where you're about to see people. You're about to see souls coming in. You're about to see, like, I'm telling you from every side, every side of the track, every monetary, from the rich to the poor to every color to every background, it is, it is going to be like, Church is open. Come on. And you're about to watch and see people of every race, every everything. They're coming in because the glory of the Lord's about to be poured out on this earth in an unprecedented way. I believe that. I get so excited when I talk about what God's doing in this city. Because I'm claiming that this city is a city for Jesus Christ. I love, we had some young people that went out Wednesday night after church when it was freezing cold. And they gave out burgers and blankets. You know what? God is moving in this church. God is moving in this church. God's laying it on people's heart. And, 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 and the, the, the stories and the things and, 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 and the, the texts that I'll get saying, Hey, I, God led me a different way today. Look, hey, just did that this week. God led her a different way and there was a homeless person right and it was freezing cold and she and her baby Mason were able to bless this person I am telling you God is moving on the people in this church we are waking up with compassion like never before and and you look at people and go well 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 why are they that way that's just the way they choose to be 
God didn't tell us to do that. He said the poor is always going to be among you. He did tell us to feed them. He did tell us to clothe them. He, didn't, he did say, just don't say be warmed and filled. And I'm telling you something. God is doing something in this city. This city, Augusta, Georgia, and the surrounding cities are going to be a model city. I am telling you the homeless rate is going down. Drugs and prostitution, it is going down. Those people are going to get radically born again. Radically born again. They're going to be in their uh, houses snorting their stuff, and the glory of God's going to come. Um, you watch. You watch. I'm ready. I'm ready. They're going to tell their testimony. I was snorting my stuff, whatever it is. I was doing my thing. And the presence of God came on me. And I had to drop it. I don't know what happened. All I know is I encountered a power that is greater than me. I don't know how it happened either. I just know I encountered something greater than me. Man, I feel the power of God all on this thing. Can y'all see that? We have people in this church right now that are, that, that are policemen that are in some of the, and, and undercover that are in some of the most dangerous places. And I am telling you something, when, when they carry the presence of God into those places, they may not even realize, but we're praying for them. And they are carriers of the anointing of God. I see crack houses flipped upside down and turned into church houses for the glory of God. I am telling you, we have to get a vision. Why do I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because he says there's a power that will come on you, and you can go out, and you can be a witness. You can be a witness for the glory of God. When you realize the power, he says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and quickens your body. He dwells in you, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So why do we want this Holy Spirit? So that you can live a life of victory. Yeah, we got Jesus in our heart. Yeah. But he says, that's great. But he says, now I want you to have something even greater. And he says, you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And he says, God says, he baptized you in the Holy Ghost. And every time you're feeling down or you don't even know or you're wanting to go minister to somebody, you can And the Spirit of God begin to bear witness. And I am telling you, by the Spirit of God, I feel this thing on me. There are so many of you that are you are living a weak life. You are living under what God has called you. You are living under the bridge. You are living less than. And God's saying, I've, got, I've made a way. I made a way if you would just get out of your religious religious self and say I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost and watch some power Woo! I could have had a V8 some power come to my life he has made a way he's made a way for you to have power why do we look as no thank you no thank you I'm not going to pray in the Holy Spirit what is that gibber going to do are you crazy? Yeah, I am. And it works. I absolutely am. And it works. It works. And I live a victorious life because of this, the, the, the one who died for me. He died for you. He died for you. There are dads in this room. And if you will just yield to the power of the Holy Ghost, you will see that he has got a greater way. You're struggling. You're struggling, and he's saying, I want to take the struggle off of you. Would you just yield to me? Would you just yield to me? That's what he wants. 1 John 2, 20 says, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. The Passion says the Holy One has anointed you, and you know the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It will set you free. I love the Holy Spirit's help. Jesus made a way for the church to live victoriously. Jesus said, when I go, I won't leave you alone, but I'm going to give you the comforter. And he is the spirit of truth. You want to know the truth? Ask the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. But so many times we listen to the devil who is the father of lies instead of the spirit of truth. We listen to the father of lies and he tells you everything that you're not and you agree with him. And you agree with him. You're agreeing with the father of lies instead of saying, wait a minute, I'm going to open up my heart to the spirit of truth right now. That is a lie. That is a lie. I told him Wednesday night, liar, liar, pants on fire. You tell the devil, no, absolutely not. You stand up. The word of God says in Luke 10, 19, I've given you all authority. I've given you authority to serve 
to, to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall any by, by any means harm you. You have that power in you. It's not just me. You got it. You got it. Say, I got it. I got it. Say, I got it. Say, I got it. Look at your neighbor and say, you got it. Man, I see like maybe, maybe Pastor Brian has to be like the, the I mean, he's the pastor, but me has to be the muscle of the church because like I see this muscle, like I see, I see the church, like the whole church, like forming like this big flex muscle like you you know what I think of that is you're strong you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might you are strong you are strong you might feel like poop but you're strong <laughs> say the opposite don't agree with the father of lies agree with the spirit of truth that says I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me the strength who gives me the strength? I am looking at a powerful church. I just see it. If you could just see what I see right now. I just see it. I see it. I see the power of God coming on you. God's stirring up some of y'all. He's stirring up dreams and desires and gifts. You've been laying low. You had low-level thinking. You've let the devil buy you a lie that your life is just not good and everybody else is. And I'm telling you today, the Spirit of God's coming on you, and you're going to see that you are something else. You are somebody going somewhere with a future, and you look a lot better than you look right Right now, okay? All right. So Jude one twenty says this. Y'all know that. But you, beloved, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Verse 22. I done. I'm out of breath. I get mad at the devil, you know? Like, I get mad at him. Like, he is just such a loser. And when I look at you, I see such greatness. Like, I see, like, I mean, powerful. Wow. And so if I seem like I'm mad because I'm a really nice person, ask, ask people that know me. Like I'm really a nice person. I am not mad. I just want to put the devil in a headlock and give him a run for his money. Because I am telling you something. I see you as so powerful. And I want you to see you as so powerful. I want you to see you as victorious. Don't lay over and lay down and roll over and just say it's just there's somebody in here and you're wanting to quit. And I'm telling you, it's not your time to quit. Matter of fact, Amy, I think you just gave that word. Was that in this service? I don't even, it's all blurs together. And you're wanting to quit. It is not your time to quit. It is not your time to get up, give up. It is your time to refire. It is your time to get back and say, God, refire me. Ignite a fire that is on the inside of me so that I can be a world changer. Amen. Whew. Mm. Okay. I'm sweating. All right. So how cool is it that God would come up with a way to bypass your natural mind in moments of weakness to make a way of escape for you? How cool. He's so awesome. So when, when, when you find yourself in temptation, number one, don't keep going towards the temptation. Don't keep going to it. Like, I can't see it. Like, what? What temptation? What? What are you talking about? And you're knocking everything over, and I have no clue what you're talking about. And you're going like a zombie. And, and God's saying, hello. Holy Spirit's going, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. Would you stop right there? Just stop right there. Just stop right there. It's not a good idea. Let's stop. I know, you, I know you're angry. I know that. Let's don't do that. I know you're emotional. I know, you're, I know you don't feel that. Just, just stop, stop, stop. And if we don't watch it, we allow our flesh to come and dominate. And we ignore every prompting of the Holy Spirit. And we just go bulldoze right in to where it says, caution, 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 caution. And then you wonder, well, how did I get here? How did I get here? My life is a disaster. How did I get here? It's because we ignored the caution tape. We ignored the promptings. We ignored those things. And that is why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness, he wants to help you. It doesn't mean that you're never going to make a mistake. It doesn't mean that, that you're perfect and powerful in a way that you're never going to do that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given you the comforter. He said, look, I know you're going to have struggles. I know you're going to have some things that are, I know you're in this world. And I know the temptations are strong. And I know what you see. And I know what you hear. And I know what you watch. And I know what's around. And I love you so much to give you somebody 
who's going to help you. He's going to be your paraclete. And he's going to stand by you and walk with you every step of the way. No, Amy, don't do that. Okay, not a good idea. And then pray in the Holy Ghost. And watch strength get built back up in you. Body of Christ, you're rising up. Boy, you are a Look at the person and say, you are something else. Look at You are something else. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Romans 8, 26 says this. Likewise, the Spirit helps us with our what? Anybody got a weakness in here? It could be from a candy bar to a, I don't know. I don't know. Candy bar to a candy bar. He says, likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. So you mean to tell me that when I pray with the Holy Spirit and we come into agreement that we're going to be praying the perfect will of God? Yes! We're going to be in agreement. We're going to get in agreement. So get this. The more you pray in the Spirit, the stronger you're going to be to daily overcome the bait of Satan every single day. And I, you don't have to go into, uh, you don't have to pray like these long times. Like some of you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? So when you're driving and you're driving and it's really dark. Oh, Holy Spirit, I welcome you into this car. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you into my day. Holy Spirit, if there's anybody that needs anything I got, that needs the love of Jesus, I thank you that I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I won't grieve the Holy Spirit. God, I'm going to, I'm going to the grocery store today. God, if there's anybody, if there's anybody, if there's a mama that looks like she is out of control with her kids and they are flailing all over, God, if you need me, God, I'm there. God whatever it is that you need God and I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit and then when you when you encounter when you encounter trouble on the workplace or you encounter trouble in the family y'all are all getting together with family okay and so uh Everybody's getting together with family upcoming. And maybe there's some friction with family and you're like oh Lord I do not like Christmas Eve because uncle so-and-so comes and he's always drunk and he does this and he does that. I invited, I invited, this is funny, I invited someone from our church, well Gabe actually used to come, he used to come on Christmas Eve to, to our Christmas Eve and I was like, Gabe, just don't judge me, okay, just don't judge me by my family. Not sure what could come out of their mouth, like my extended family. And so uh, I just want to tell you that the Holy Spirit can make every situation that you're in so much better so much better you know why because he will temper you he'll temper you how do you say that because he says for the fruit of the spirit is wow did you get that how do you say he can temper me because the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness, self-control. What's the opposite of all those? That's where the enemy wants you to live, the life of the flesh. So we're living by the Spirit. That's the fruit he wants to bear in your life. Don't you want that? I was in, I was in, uh, I was greeting at the HPSO the other day, and this lady walks in, and she's like, why are you always so happy? Why are you always so happy? Every time I come in here, you're just smiling, and you're just so happy. And I said, can I ask you a question? Why do you not want to be? Don't, it's more fun to be like this than like that, right? So and she said, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. And so by the time she was leaving, she was just happy and smiling. Why? Because the person that you are, you are contagious. You set the environment in a room. You are the thermometer. You are, that is who you are. And so I'm saying today, I'm saying today that we can allow the Holy Spirit to invade our life in a brand new way. Oh, church, it'll be like the church of new life, the church on fire and full of the Holy Ghost, the church who loves Jesus, the church who loves people, the church who is so compassionate, the church who has surrendered. Isn't that fun? That's who we are. And so I just want to read, um, y'all hanging in there, give me just a few more minutes. Galatians chapter 5, in the Passion Translation, 
we just talked about the fruit of the Spirit, but let me just back up a little bit. Let me just say this. And um, because, you know, that f- the, the flesh craves, and it's very important for you to understand what your flesh is craving. It's very important for you to understand because if you don't understand what your flesh is craving, then you're going to get lured and pulled away and not even realize it. So it's very important. It says in verse 16, as you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. That's the key. Yield freely and fully. Say freely. Fully. Freely. Fully. Yield. Yield. Freely. Fully. That's our job. God, I want to yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. It says you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. My selfish nature gets to go bye-bye when I yield freely and fully to the power of God. It says for your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit. How many of you know when you've ever offended the Holy Spirit? I do. Yeah, you know. It's good for you to know that. And hinder him from living free with you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self life from dominating you. So when you get the Holy Spirit in your life and you begin to let him develop in you and not suppress him, then the Holy Spirit starts to dominate your life instead of your flesh dominating your life. That's how that works. So then the two incompatible and conflicting forces... Within you are the self-life of the flesh and the new life of the spirit. And when you are brought into the full freedom of the spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the domination of the law, but soaring above it. Verse 19, the cravings of the self-life are obvious. Here they go. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography. Chasing after things instead of God. Manipulating others. Hatred of those who get in your way. Whoa. Senseless arguments. He put that in there with like murder and stuff. God help me. Jesus. Resentment when others are favored. Ow. Like that was like the big toe. Tantrum, tantrum, temper tantrums. That's like that middle, like that third toe over. Angry quarrels. Only thinking of yourself. Being in love with your own opinions. How? That might have been the pinky toe. Or a big toe. I don't know. Stumped it. Being in love with your own opinions. Wow. Being envious of the blessing of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, will parties, and other similar behavior. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom of God? Ow! And if we read these things and we... Say, God, I want to be a doer of this thing and let that water wash over. Okay, where was I in that list? And God, let's just wash. Let's do a wash. Let's do a wash. Let's do a wash. God, wash over my mind. God, wash over my mind. God, wash over my mind. And you begin just to say, God, just let, I, I, I thank you that those unchecked cravings of my flesh, if you, don't, if you don't take care of that unchecked craving of the flesh, it will lead to the danger zone. It will lead to the danger zone. And so that is why we must have the fruit of the Spirit in our life. It wouldn't even be a bad idea for if you don't know the fruit, to learn the fruit. And if you do know the fruit, to say those fruit every day. God, I'm going to walk in these things. God, this is who I am. God, I'm going to let it be obvious that the the, the fruit of the Spirit is living through my life. And so I, I feel like that what the Lord was saying to me is why ignore the help that was given to you, church. Why? Why ignore the help that many even have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit years past but have gotten lazy? Because honestly, let's just be honest, you didn't think it did anything. 
You didn't think it did anything. And so you just said, I'm the, I'm, that's just one less thing I have to do. Somebody in this room said that. It's one less thing I have to do. I'm just not going to. I'm not going to pray in the spirit. And when you, when, you, when, you, when you let that go, you realize that you let go of a power that God was given to you. Not only a power, but a sensitivity to his presence. A sensitivity to his presence. Because, you know, when you start praying in the Holy Spirit, God will, God will start to minister to you out in the work marketplace minister through you out in the marketplace you just you just begin to pray in the holy spirit there's power there's power there's power there so we don't want to ignore this power amen acts 1 8 says but you shall receive power when the holy spirit's come upon you and you know that to be a witness i love acts 2 4 it says then um Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat each of of them, and they were all filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, and, you know, it says, I, I love this part because as a fire, and, you know, and I just think that's what I was saying earlier, you know, when you pull up to the Arby's and say, I'll have a number one, please. And I'm thinking that what we need to do is say, yes, Holy Spirit, I'll have a number one, please. The Holy Spirit and fire. That's what that is. Because I'm telling you something. If you get the Holy Spirit as your convictor right there and you let the fire of God burn out anything in you that doesn't need to be, that is a great combination right there. And that's what we need to have in our lives. And so I just want to go over just a, a few key points for you to remember why you need to pray in the Holy Spirit and why you need to pull the Holy Spirit and say, uh, you know, some of you just may need to say, God, I I repent. I've not, I have come up so short and I didn't even have to. I didn't even have to. I was struggling with an addiction and if I would have just called out to you, God, you, you were right there and you would have put me with the right people at the right place at the right time and you could have, you could have done something so amazing in my life, but I resisted you. And that's what I don't want. I don't want us to be a church who resists the workings and the dealings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so when you receive the Holy Spirit, you get power. You get power over the devil, over the flesh, and over temptation. I love that. You, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you get power. You get power over the devil, over the flesh, and over temptation. The Holy Spirit comes to blow Jesus bigger up in your life. And I love that. He just comes up, Jesus just got big in my life. Jesus just like expanded in my life when I got to be aware of who the Holy Spirit is in my life. It's time for the church to give themselves entirely over to the power of the Holy Spirit. It's time to give yourself, yourself entirely over to the Holy Spirit. I believe you want that. I believe you do. I believe that there's some flesh in here that are just like, er, er, like, okay, I do, I don't, I do, I don't, I do, I don't. But can I tell you something? Stop trying to stop the habit. Stop trying to stop the habit. Because that's where most people, and I'm just giving you something practical. Stop trying to stop the, the, the habit, the addiction, the whatever it is, the, the, the anger, the rage, the whatever it is stop trying to do that okay take your hands off of that fall in love with Jesus I'm helping you fall in love with Jesus and that will fall you know why because you're over here trying to work it work it work it work it work it you're doing it backwards If you fall in love with Jesus, then that is no longer going to be a desire for you. It will repulse you. There are things that I absolutely cannot, Amy Maxwell, watch. I cannot go. Why? Because the Holy Spirit on the inside of me says, that is not okay. I don't say, well, that's okay for her and that's okay for him. No, it is not okay with me because when I do it, I'm defiled. So the Holy Spirit says, I cannot do that. 
I cannot be a part of that. I can't be a part of that conversation. I can't be a part of that, that, that what you're doing. I can't be a part of that party. No, it might be where the crowd is. It might look like that's where everybody is. But I'm going to choose the narrow gate. And if I got to go through the narrow gate all by my lonesome, I'm going to go through the narrow gate because that is where I will spend eternity. I will not spend eternity here with your cute self. I will spend eternity up in heaven. And that is where I want to be. That is where I want to be. And I want to hear the famous words God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's what it's all about. So I'm telling you, there's somebody in here and you say, I'm lonely. I ain't got no friends. Guess what? You and God make a majority. And you get in there and you have fun with Jesus and he'll bring you the right person. You better have the right person than the wrong person. The wrong person will take you down and will take you out. There are some people that you've got toxic relationships and they are up close and personal. And you need to get them out of your life because they are making you fall. Thank you. Okay. Oh, y'all, I promise I'm nice. Ask Harley. Okay. So I love you. Who said that? I just love you. I love you. <laughs> you go, girl. First uh, Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? So good. So good. So good. Romans 8.14. For all who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Yeah, that's you say that's me. Here's another one for you. Romans 8, 11. This is my favorite one. I said it earlier. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your body. Y'all, can I tell you, I say that scripture all the time, like all the time. If you ever hear me pray, I'm probably going to pray out that scripture because I believe that so much because I have to be reminded I am absolutely nothing without Jesus Christ. But with Jesus, I can do all things. And, and, and when I have his power flowing through me, oh, my goodness, I can do it. We can do things when we realize that he's flowing through us. John 6, 63 says it, it the spirit who gives life, uh, the flesh is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Acts 10, 38, we said that one already too. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the power and the Holy Spirit. And he went about doing good and healing all who were pressed of the devil for God was with him. Guess what? He wants that to be said of you too. You too. Say me too. Me too. Okay. Acts 9, 17, you can go back and read a lot of these. There's, there's, let me, can I just tell you, there's so much about the Holy Spirit. You can talk about the gifts of the Spirit, tongues, interpretations. You can talk, we, we may just have some Holy Ghost classes up in here because I believe that the church needs to understand it all. And you can't get it all within one little bloop right here this morning. But I do want to whet your appetite. And I do want to say, Mama and Daddy, you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, young person, you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost. You need to, it's just good for you. It's just so good for you. It's like you ate your spiritual vegetables okay and so acts 19 17 says so ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him he said brother saul the lord jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the holy spirit what happened to taylor what happened to these that are coming here they got their sight back whoa i got my vision back now i can see i wasn't seeing i had all they i had all these glasses piled up on top of me i had clouded vision i didn't even know where i was going what happened they get it off and they get their it says that you may regain your sight and be filled filled with the holy spirit I love uh, Matthew 24, 42. It says, therefore, uh, it says, you know, therefore. And when you see a therefore, you need to look and see what it's there for. And so it says, stay awake. And we've been talking about so much about the church waking and up, waking and up, waking and up. And fire God coming to the church and a sweet surrender and the glory of the Lord. But this is what. When I look at this, it says stay awake. Now that you're awake, stay awake. Now that you are awake, stay awake. Now that you are awake, stay awake. Stay awake. I told them that when, uh, I don't think I did this service. I don't know. Everything's bloop, bloop. And so uh, when I was driving, when I was driving and I go and up on my dashboard, it goes, dee, 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 dee. drowsiness detected. Drowsiness detected on my 
my, uh, my dashboard up there on the front. And I want to tell you that sometimes I feel like the, the church needs this alarm that goes, dee, 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 drowsiness detected. Drowsiness detected because you need to get awake and stay awake. When the, vir- the ten virgins came, five were ready, five weren't. You know that story. And the, the, the five that weren't, guess what happened? They didn't go. And so I'm saying to us, we need to not only get awake, but stay awake. Say stay awake. Because it says stay awake. You don't know what day your Lord is coming. And uh, I, I, I love, you know, I'm just going to read some of these really, really quick. It says Matthew 24. Um, and, and you can go back there. But it was as, for as, as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Till the days when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them away. And so will the coming of the Son of Man be. And I don't say these things to scare you. But I say these things to make you wide awake. There are generational curses. There are, there are so many open doors. Doors of disobedience. Doors of strife. Doors of bitterness. Doors of hard hearts, undealt offenses. An undealt offense, can I just show you this? That's a big one. And it's running around like everywhere in the church, trying to wave its little thing in there. So, who, you know, all these things are, are, are things that we've got to say, wait a minute, God show me. So that I can clearly see where you're trying to protect me. I, I love you enough because I don't want your children and your children's children to deal with things that you're dealing with now. You know, that's why I want all these young people to recognize, recognize any generational thing that would come down through their family. So that they can slay it. So that when they get married, they're not, they're not passing it down from generation to generation. But they choose to say, I'm getting free and I'm staying free. I can promise you this. You can ask Ryan Walden. He probably feels a lot better today sitting on this front row than you did last Sunday. Did you? Yes, this is true. <laughs> and, so, and so I just want to tell you that, that the Lord has given you a way to live a powerful life and not a pitiful life. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Can I tell you, just carve out some time to spend with Jesus. Carve out. How is it that we can find time to do every single thing we want to do? Everything we want to do. You shop, you get your nails done, you get your roots done, you plow fields, you play guitar, you, you do whatever. You say, Everybody can do everything. Carve out some time to do what will make you have life, life, and live it to the full. I actually wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share this in closing. Um, You know, these are all danger, danger zones. And a few weeks ago, Philip had gotten a call from one of his... um, Well, we had seen it. Actually, Leslie had seen it on Facebook. And then we found out when the funeral was. And it was a a guy that he had gone to school with and was his very best friend in school and had moved away. And always was a very happy guy. Always seemed like he loved the Lord. Went to church all the time. And he called his wife the other day. Him and Philip are the same age, one year older. He called his wife the other day and said, hey, I've got some chest pains. So she talks to him, and she says, well, you need to go to the hospital. So he goes to the hospital. He ends up getting multiple surgeries. And the wife, the wife is sitting there by the bed, and she sees his phone bling. And he's never given her the code to his phone, which husbands and wives, you can get mad at me if you want, but if your spouse does not know your code, 
I'm sorry, that is wrong. I had nothing from my husband, nothing. I'm giving you some marriage counseling, 101, basic, right? So, so his phone blings, and she has it, and she says, well, maybe I should check and see who it is. They have a huge, huge business, huge business. And so she looks down, and she says, well, maybe, maybe it's his birthday. So she puts in his birthday, and it unlocks the code to his phone. And she looks, and her eyes get huge, and she sees all the texts start rolling down. These were from other women that said he just left their house. These were from prostitutes that he had paid. There was upwards of over $30,000 missing, paying for the services. He's reading all of these text he's reading them she's reading them and her son walks in and says can you tell me if this looks right is this what I think it is and he said yeah mama and so he ends up passing away and she never is able to ask him about any of this never he ends up dying she never gets to say anything. The kids never get to say anything. And, and this is why I want to tell you, he was going to church. And you say, well, how, how, can, how, how, how is this? Exactly, how is this? When you get lukewarm and you get cold and there is no surrender and you just put your blue jeans and tennis shoes on and you got here because you thought that that's what got you saved, it's not. You being here, the devil doesn't care. He doesn't care that you're here today. But what he does care is that you leave changed. And I feel the spirit of God on me. And she picked up that phone. The next day, the next day, one of the girls texts and said, hey, I'm available. And she looks at the text. And she starts ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. She says, I'm very sorry that my husband took care of your, took use of your services. But I want to tell you of somebody that's greater. And his name is Jesus and he loves you. And she began to minister to these prostitutes through the telephone of her husband who has moved. And you say, why do we... Why do we got to knock over stuff? And why do we got to say no trespassing and keep out? And like, what is the purpose of all of this? It's so that you can have the power of God on the inside of you so that you know when you're heading down a wrong road. Wait, alert, alert, drowsy and detected. I'm, be, I'm drowsy and I need to get back to the altar. I need to get back on my knees. I need to call somebody and say, pray for me. I'm feeling the pull of the world. I need, I need you right now. And that is why, that is why we teach what we teach. Not to preach at you, but to help you. Let's all stand. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.